Schrepper on the Texas Gulf Coast, and I guess you know uh, the administration has pretty much uh, uh, said the southern end of the XL pipeline is a, is a no-brainer, and we will go with it. And uh, I was recently down there doing a hunger strike, and uh, and I chained my neck to one of the the uh, tankers going into Valero, which is one of the big chemical uh, oil refiners. taping you and I didn't get your name. Could you tell I'm us? I'm Albert Bender. Albert Bender. Mm -hmm. And you're a member of the Cherokee Nation. And yes, you live here. yes, thank you. I'd like to say a few words. Hello. Glad to have the opportunity to uh, address the assembly today. And I'm, as well, per the introduction, I'm a Native American. I'm a Cherokee Indian. And this land is all part of what historically has been Cherokee land all part of the Cherokee boundary. So it said that I'm a native of Nashville. I'm a native of Nashville going back maybe about what 40, 50,000 years or more. <laughs> and the issue of the Keystone is something that is particularly at the heart of Native American resistance now because Keystone is using the tar sands this results in a environmental disaster, not just for the environment as a whole, but the environment in terms of people who live in. In Western Canada, where they've had similar pipelines to go up, there's been a 30% elevation of rare cancers and other kinds of autoimmune diseases. Also, what is happening is on the northern plains, in South Dakota and North Dakota, Native people, the Lakota people, have organized what's called a tour of uh, moccasins on the ground, tour of resistance. And what people have pledged to do from all the different reservations is not to let the tar sands cross reservations or treaty lands. People are prepared to risk their lives by standing front of the bulldozers and people are organizing around this issue all across the northern plains, native people. And it's not just native people, of course, that are organizing again on the northern plains. It's people like yourself, people who are concerned about the environment. Myself, I've written articles in the Native American papers and also in the Tennessean. And in the uh, Tennessean, and in particular, I wrote one about a massive demonstration took place last August through September at the White House. And it was spearheaded by Native American people in that caravan from caravan of American Indian people from Canada and the Northern Plains traveled to Washington, D.C. and had a two-week demonstration in which approximately 1,423 people were arrested. And it was not just Native Americans, of course, but non-Natives were in support of the resistance. And another thing is that you will notice that the news media primarily doesn't give proper credit to what Native Americans have done in terms of the struggle. Also, 
also, just in May, we push her of the Sudanese brand tour along with other Native American leaders and other South Dakota representatives had a meeting, or supposed to be a meeting, with the federal government in Rapid City in May. But they said that they wanted to talk to the President yeah, he Obama. Made a lot of these signs. He said if President Obama doesn't show up, then the meeting would not take place. They weren't going to deal with lower level federal officials. And what happened was there was a complete walkout. People refused to negotiate or even talk to the federal officials. I would say a, a couple of other things. There was a conference, a Native American conference here, oh, back during the summer. And president of the conference was Orrin Lyons, who was a faith keeper of the Onondaga Nation of the Iroquois Confederacy. And he said something that's very telling, something that's very strong. He said that if Obama puts or approves the Keystone Pipeline, he said as far as American Indian people are concerned, that's a deal breaker. We're finished with this fight, frankly. Because that will show how he really feels about Native people. It will show that Obama and the rest of the federal government feels that we're expendable, that we are targets for extermination. And I might add that I was recently in South Dakota uh, covering another Indian crisis <coughs> of which there's a, I have an article in today's Tennessee about that. And I talked to people about the Keystone Pipeline while I was there, and people said that the pipeline should not pass. And I think about what happened during the Spanish Civil War when the benchmark or the clarion call was, they shall not pass. That is what tribes on the Northern Plains are saying. The pipeline shall not pass. And again, I'm thankful to see what's happening here today and we have to keep up the pressure because if we don't, who you knows what will happen because it is not assured that Obama will disapprove the pipeline, but we need to put as much pressure on him yeah. as possible to see that this Monster pipeline. Alberta's a long way from here, and so is the pipeline. That, that Keystone pipeline is a thousand miles from Tennessee. But as you might see from our sign, we're talking about more than one pipeline now. Because there's this shell game going on. They're, they're now taking tar sands and putting it into natural gas pipelines and reversing the flow. What used to be coming away from the ports is now going to the ports, carrying this goo from Alberta. Uh, there's, there's two of them that are gonna cross or are crossing Tennessee over near Memphis. Tar sands pipelines are going within a few miles of the, ten, of the Mississippi River, crossing the Ohio Hi, River, and going real close to Real Foot Lake which was formed uh, in the, early, the late 1800s by earthquakes. So you can imagine uh, this 36 inch uh, dam is the same size as this. It goes above ground, it goes underground, wherever, um, thousands of miles along. There's a piece of the, uh, this new, um, east, what is it called, East Coast? East, um, Anyways, one of them is uh, not built, hasn't, isn't totally built yet. They're building a piece of it in Illinois, but the part through Tennessee is already there. All they gotta do is flip a switch and make it go the other way. The, the problem is that not all pipelines can carry tar sands. <coughs> tar sands is, is a very heavy material. It's heavier than water. It leaks like it did in the Kalamazoo River. It sinks to the bottom and you can't get it out. But in order to make it flow, they have to put in all this um, chemicals to break it down. And they also have to put it under pressure. And sometimes they have to heat the pipeline. So you can imagine the kind of spills you might get from a heated, pressurized pipeline full of heavy goo and chemicals. That's what's coming our way. And to make it worse, they're actually considering opening up tar sands, open mining in Kentucky and Alabama. Both sides of us. We need to stop all of this. We need to stop all the pipelines that are full of fossil fuels, including natural gas, 
don't get me started on fracking. <laughs> uh, and so just remember, this isn't just about KXL. This is about the whole industry. Yeah. Thank you. So just I'll check it out. Um, it's <laughs> It's a national website. And um, I have some flyers for a weekly introductory call where you can listen in um, for free and hear more about the organization. So get a flyer for me if you want to do that. But uh, yeah. we get a carbon yeah, tax pass. It would have all of the revenue would be returned to households to offset the rising cost of energy. It would increase gradually and it would drive all the investments into renewables. And all the leading economists, including a lot of Republican economists, say this is the way to go. Bill McKibben says it's the way to go. We have his, his endorsement on our website. So, uh, in addition to the local level, we need to be working on the big scale at the national level to get a carbon tax. All of the revenue returned to us, and none going to the um, offset the deficit or anything like that. So, I hope you'll check us out and let's go march. Come on. No, get out of my sight. Okay, you guys need to stay where I can see you. We're getting ready to march down the street, okay? <laughs> Yeah. 